uh, or sorry, I should assume this sort of conditions to apply the principle of mathematical induction and the conditions to apply uh, the principle of mathematical induction is uh, that um, the property is true of zero and that the property is always inherited. And from this, I'm going to prove that, in fact, all numbers uh, have uh, this property. Okay, how can we prove that all numbers have this property? Well, suppose not. Okay. So, suppose not, and we're going to get a contradiction. Okay, so, suppose not. Well, suppose not. Um, if it's not true that all numbers have the property, then it means that there's some number that doesn't. So, there exists some number n uh, for which uh, it's just not true that that property holds. Okay, um, and uh, so let's just call it, uh, well, let's just call it n. Okay, so here's what I now have. I have this single number n that this property uh, doesn't uh, hold for. Okay, maybe I'll write this over here. Call it n. Uh, so, so it's just not true that n has this property. All right. Um, why is that impossible? Well, if you just kind of talk it out, you say, all right, look, come on, man. This, there's some number out there, eventually, that doesn't have this property. But the property is always inherited. And zero has the property. So if zero has the property, then one does, then two does, then three does, then four does, etc. And eventually, if you get to some number that doesn't have the property, like, say, 40 doesn't have the property, well then, as the property is always inherited, it means that 39 didn't have it either. But if 39 didn't have it, then 38 must have not, have, not had it. And etc. on and on and down, until you get to zero, but zero does have this property. All right, how can we sort of formalize this? Uh, well, um, note that the key thing we're gonna use to prove this is the WAP. And the WAP says, that every non-empty set of, uh, of naturals has a least element. And if you sort of think about this, if this is saying that 40 doesn't have that property, well, is 40 the first number that doesn't have that property? Oh, it can't be. Because if 39 had the property, then 40 must have it too. Uh, and so what we can now do is we can just construct the set of all numbers that don't have this property. So let uh, S B the set of all um, numbers X uh, such that uh, the property does not hold of X uh, and uh, X, X is the natural. Okay. Note that uh, you know that uh, since uh, since uh, N it does not have this property. Um, so since n is in S, then uh, S is non-empty. Um, and since, yeah, uh, because n is a number that doesn't have this property. Well, since there is, uh, since there is at least something in this set, uh, and it's a set of naturals, then the WAP is applicable. Every non-empty non subset of the naturals has a least element. So now what we're going to do is apply the WAP um, to the set S. And um, what we get is some number M. Uh, so apply the WAP, uh, I'll say it like this, apply the WAP to S. S has a least uh, element um, and uh, call it M. Okay, so what do we know about this number M? Well, we know about this number M is two things. Uh, that, well, that M is the, well, what, I guess maybe one thing I can say about M is that, uh, is that M does not have the property. And then, by the way, since zero does have this property and M doesn't, uh, then I can conclude that M is not zero. And if M is not zero, uh, M must be something sort of greater than zero, uh, some number. 
Well, now we're sort of seeing the problem, right? If m is the least number which doesn't have the property, then m minus 1 couldn't have that property either. Um, so m is greater than 0, so m minus 1 is also a natural, um, as long as m is positive. But now we have a problem, uh, because uh, we can now sort of, since we can sort of take this uh, conditional that we know, um, and we just set, uh, we set k equal to uh, m minus 1. And if we set k equal to m minus 1, then we get that, uh, yeah, if p of m minus 1, then uh, p of m. Um, but we also have, and maybe you'll just, while we're at it, we can just take the contrapositive of this. The contrapositive of this is that if not p of m, then uh, not p of m minus 1. But this is the issue, right? Uh, we have this number m. m is the uh, first number that doesn't have this property. Um, but from our, uh, from our conditional, uh, which is just the contrapositive of this assumption that the uh, property is always inherited, uh, then uh, we conclude that, uh, that uh, m minus 1 doesn't have the property either. But if m minus 1 doesn't have the property, um, then that means that m minus 1 is in this set of all numbers that don't have the property. But that is a contradiction with the fact that m is the least element of s. OK, this has been written out uh, sort of very uh, kind of uh, formally and hopefully clearly. Um, but uh, also, I hope you got like the gist. Uh, all right, we're going to do more practice like this um, in class. So uh, you didn't totally get this, you'll have more opportunity. All right, last thing, uh, last sort of two things. Um, we did an easy induction problem uh, to remind you. We proved mathematical induction. And now uh, we're going to do some hard induction problems. So all right, let's go. Uh, do I have space for this? Sure. Um, let's go over here. And so no, we don't have space is the conclusion. Um, I'm going to do two hard, uh, I think they're hard, uh, <coughs> induction problems. Um, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. One of them, I don't remember, different people in this class. Um, you know, one guy from functions, I didn't teach functions that year. Some people from pre -cupsy two years ago, I think I did a pretty good job. Some people from pre -cupsy last year, some people didn't have me. So, you know, uh, who taught you induction? It's a big old who knows. Um, all right, so, uh, let's do it. So what I consider to be a much more difficult case um, is when there are inequalities involved. So theorem uh, n squared is less than n factorial uh, for n greater than or equal to 4. OK. Uh, let's go. Uh, OK. Um, well. Base case. Uh, now the first number that I'm claiming uh, this formula holds for is four. So the base case is n equals four, and this is a slightly modified, I guess, version of mathematical induction. So if n equals four, uh, is it true? Um, well, just yeah, right. Four squared is sixteen, and that is less than four factorial, um, which is twenty-four. So just true. 
Okay, now we make our inductive hypothesis. Um, and our inductive hypothesis is that um, this works for some number k. There's no real reason to use k's and n's. It's only if you find that to be more clear. I don't know, we can use k. Uh, so what, uh, what I'm assuming, therefore, is that k squared is less than k factorial for some arbitrary k. Um, and now, what I need to show, the thing that will conclude the inductive hypothesis, is that uh, k plus 1 uh, squared is less than k plus 1 uh, factorial. All right, well, if you've never done this before, or if you haven't done this in a long time, this is kind of tricky. Um, and there are like some kind of smart people ways of doing this a little bit like faster and stuff. But uh, I personally I think this is quite hard. So I have a kind of a, a sort of um, can't go wrong kind of approach. So this, this, has, been, uh, this has been assumed uh, for some k greater than or equal to 4. Uh, and this is what I need to show. Right, how am I going to show this? Well, my uh, sort of plan is to incrementally rewrite this thing that I want to show in simpler terms so that it then becomes kind of obvious. So, all right, if I want to show that k plus 1 squared is less than k plus 1 factorial, well, first of all, k plus 1 factorial is just k plus 1 times k factorial. So already, uh, the thing I need to show is actually quite simpler. It's just that k plus 1 is less than k factorial. And now this sounds like really uh, easy. Um, and maybe it is. Um, but uh, it's still kind of hard to do sort of algebra here between these things. Okay, um, well, anyway. This, so this is the thing that we have to prove. All right, so I kind of break this down, this is my approach, um, into there's this statement. This is what I know uh, to be true because I've assumed it for the purposes of the inductive step. Um, this is what I am trying to prove um, to be true. And somehow what I need is some uh, thing to bridge the gap between what I know and what I'm trying to prove. Uh, and here, uh, I think that there is the, there's a clear uh, statement. This is this thing I call the wish. Uh, the wish says, oh man, I wish it were true that uh, k plus 1 was less than k squared. Um, I wish this were true because uh, if this were true, this I'll call the wish. I think green and red are basically invisible on this camera. Um, if this were true, then uh, since I know that k squared is less than k factorial, then since k plus 1 is less than k squared, and k squared is less than k factorial, by transitivity that would show me that k plus 1 is less than k squared. Okay, and now uh, I just have to show this. Well, this seems pretty easy, this wish, man, because this is just equivalent to showing that k squared minus k uh, minus 1 is positive. And now we're down to the level of just kind of like some sort of basic uh, kind of algebra 2 sort of facts about polynomials. And there's many ways to do this. I think the smoothest way is to complete the square. Um, this says k squared, so I know k squared minus k. This would be like um, a fourth. I need that to be a fourth. Uh, and so that's like minus 5 fourths. So uh, is this true? Uh, what I need to show is that k minus a half uh, squared is greater than 5 fourths. Uh, is that true? Yeah, that's just true. So uh, once you get something that's true, you kind of just chill and you're like, yeah, I got this. Okay, now if you're trying to be organized about things, then you should do the actual uh, proof. Uh, maybe you consider all of this to just be uh, scratch work. Uh, okay, so let's start the proof. Well, there's one and only one thing I know about this k, uh, which is that it's greater than or equal to 4. Uh, and, okay, well, k is greater than or equal to 4, and that's just another way of saying that k is greater than 3. Uh, and now, I'm trying to prove this fact down here. So what I get is that k minus a half is greater than 5 halves. 
Uh, that's true. And if k minus a half is greater than 5 halves, now my square, and they get that k minus a half squared uh, is greater than 25 fourths. Uh, it's just a property of numbers. Well, now it's just true that 25 fourths is uh, itself uh, what is it? uh, greater than 5 fourths. Yeah. Yeah, da, 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 da. yeah, 25 fourths is greater than 5 fourths. And so if k minus 1, uh, k minus 1 half squared is greater than 25 fourths, and 25 fourths is greater than 5 fourths, then again by transitivity, this gives me that k minus 1 half squared is greater than 5 fourths. Um, and that's the uh, place where I kind of stopped uh, doing work, but of course, if I keep this going, this gives me k squared uh, minus k. Uh, plus a fourth is greater than five fourths, and uh, now uh, let's see uh, what is going on. So this says that k squared is greater than uh, k plus one, and the fact that k plus one is less than k squared was the real goal all along. So this wish that I invented, I have now proved the wish. And I've proved the wish uh, from merely the fact that k is greater than or equal to 4. Uh, well, I also have my inductive hypothesis. My inductive hypothesis is that k squared is less than k factorial. And so, sort of as promised, uh, I now uh, link these two uh, statements together uh, here. Um, if k plus 1 uh, is less than k squared, and k squared is less than k factorial, then by transitive, well, maybe I'll just even write it one more time. So k plus 1 is less than k squared, which is in turn less than k factorial. So in fact, just k plus 1 is less than k factorial. And finally, I multiply both sides by k plus 1. That gives me k plus 1 squared is less than k plus 1 uh, k factorial. And so k plus 1 squared is less than k plus 1 factorial. And that was the actual thing I wanted to show because now I have established, I've sort of completed the inductive step by showing that whenever k squared is less than k factorial, this property is inherited by the next number, that uh, k plus 1 squared is less than k plus 1 uh, factorial. All right. Uh, and since it's true for 4, and whenever it's true for a number, uh, it's true for the next number. Really, I should write that this is true for all k greater than or equal to 4, is what I should say. Uh, that this is true uh, for all numbers of 4 and up. Okay, that was, I'll say, medium. Maybe, maybe even hard is, appro is an appropriate answer. Uh, now we're going to do one more of these. Oh, I did that kind of fast. Um, and this is like harder than anything I would have given in like pre -calc C or whatever. Um, so let's go. Last problem. Woo! A theorem that I have absolutely no other understanding of whatsoever. And that's the best thing about induction. You don't have to understand it. Um, and now I'm just going to bust out the big pi symbol which stands for, just like the sigma is the uh, sum of a bunch of things, the pi symbol is the product of a bunch of things. So take the product uh, from k equals 1 to n uh, of something of the form 1 minus uh, 1 over 2 to the k, uh, that if you multiply all these together, then what you get is greater than or equal to 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. Uh, for all n uh, greater than or equal to 1. All right, I'm going to just go fast. Uh, let's try to do this. Um, well, <laughs> let's let this entire expression on the left-hand side be uh, a sub n, and the entire expression on the right-hand side be uh, b sub n. Okay, uh, let's check out the base case. Uh, the base case is that this is true for n equals 1. All right. Well, when n equals 1, uh, what is a 1, I guess? Uh, a 1 
is the product, starting with k equals 1 and ending with 1, so it's just one thing, of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the 1. Uh, so actually, this is just, this is just a half. Uh, okay, and what's b1? Uh, well, b1 is a fourth plus uh, 1 over uh, 2 to the 1 plus 1. Uh, so that's uh, a fourth plus a half. No, a fourth plus a fourth, um, which is a half. Uh, and so indeed, uh, a1 is greater than or equal to b1. In fact, it's equal in this case. Okay, base case proof. Uh, all right, and now uh, we make our inductive hypothesis. Inductive hypothesis is to suppose uh, that a sub n is greater than or equal to b sub n uh, for some n greater than or equal to 1, and show that it's true for the next number. So we're going to show that a sub n plus 1 is greater than or equal to b sub n plus 1. In other words, show that the property of this theorem uh, being true for a particular number is always inherited uh, by the next number. Okay, uh, and now, okay, this big pi symbol is kind of scaring me, so I'm going to write this out in an expanded fashion. So here is what I know. What I know is that, uh, I know it because I've assumed it uh, for, for the purposes of this proof, that this left side is always greater than or equal to the right side. In other words, if you multiply out 1 minus a half times 1 minus, and we go up by powers of 2, so 1 minus a fourth times 1 minus an eighth, etc., and you keep multiplying until you get to um, 1, maybe we need to save space. And you eventually stop at 1 minus. 1 over 2 to the n, huh, that that is greater than or equal to a fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. That's what I know. And what I want to prove is that this works for the next number, uh, n, n plus 1. So I need to prove that 1 minus a half times 1 minus a fourth times da, 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 all the way up to 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n times the next uh, factor, which is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1, is greater than or equal to 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the, in place of n, this will be n plus 1 plus 1, so n plus 2. Okay, that's what I need to prove. Well, uh, my strategy is going to be to slightly rewrite this proof statement to make it look as much as possible like the thing I know. Uh, and so I'm just going to divide both sides by this thing. Um, so what I'm, I'm instead going to prove is that 1 minus a half times 1 minus a fourth, blah, 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 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n is greater than or equal to 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 times um, this thing, which is, okay, let's do a little bit of algebra at the same time. If you get a common denominator here, this is 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. So if I divide by that, it's like 2 to the n plus 1 over uh, 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. I think I did that right. Yeah, I did. Okay, so that is what I want to prove. All right. Well, now you sort of pause for this kind of reflective moment where you're like, all right, I know that this is true. I want, uh, or rather, I need to prove that this is true. So, I create a wish. The wish is 
the thing that I sort of wish were true, that if it were true, would get me the thing I'm trying to prove. Uh, and so what is the wish in this case? Well, let's see. Uh, that's bigger than that. I need to prove that this is bigger than that. And so if I can show that um, uh, this is bigger than, if I can show that that is bigger than that, right? No, other way around. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so my wish is that 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 is greater than or equal to um, 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 times 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. All right. And, okay, putting a sort of a green box around this wish, why is this wish um, sufficient? Uh, well, combining the no with the wish by transitivity gives me that this is bigger than this, which is bigger than this, uh, and therefore that's exactly the thing in, in, the, in the blue box, uh, which, is, which is ultimately what I need. Okay, so now this whole problem boils down to, I need to prove the wish. All right, so why is this wish true? Why is it true that 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 times uh, this other thing down there? Um, so which is 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Um, I have no idea why this is true. So I'm just going to put a question mark here. I'm just going to crank this crap out. All right, let's do it. I'm um, using our algebra skills. All right, first of all, I don't like, I like my denominators to be like pretty, not like this. This is not pretty. So I'm going to throw in a little minus 1 plus 1 here. Um, and so therefore, this is 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 greater than or equal to 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 times 1 plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Um, why is this a good idea? I feel like it's a good idea because now I'm just going to multiply out the right hand side. So I get 1 fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 is greater than or equal to, I get a fourth uh, plus, um, is there any other better way to write this? I don't think so. 1 fourth times 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Uh, so we get a bump and a bump plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 uh, plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 times 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. This is just the first thing that came to me, by the way. This is not necessarily the best way to do this. All right, so, chuck up, chuck up. All right, what now? Um, what now? I have no idea what now. Uh, well, I'll just get rid of the one fourth. So, this is one over two to the n plus one is greater than or equal to, the one fourths are gone. Um, this is 1 fourth times 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 times 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Okay, what now? Um, I guess I want to like get rid of some fractions. Let me multiply by, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to the n plus 1. That seems like a good idea. So this gives me that 1 is greater than or equal to, is this a good idea? All right, I guess it is. 2 to the n plus 1 over 4 uh, times 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 plus, okay, well here this is nice because this 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 actually ends up just being like a half. And here we get like another just like half, right? Times 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Okay, and now I guess I can just like subtract 
uh, a half from both sides. So let's do that. So now I have a half is greater than or equal to um, 2 to the n plus 1 over 4 times 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 uh, plus uh, a half times 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Alright, now I guess I can like at least multiply by like 4 or something? Multiply by 2? Uh, multiply by 2? Why is that a good idea? Oh, these are like the same denominators. No, they're not quite. They almost are. Uh, oh yeah, this, this cancels, right? I should just maybe do this now. 2 to the n plus 1 over 4 could also be written as just 2 to the n over 2. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, so, yeah, just multiply by 2, man. So this is like 1 is greater than or equal to uh, 2 to the n over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Oh, it's like the same thing. So actually this is really smooth. This is just saying that 1 is greater than or equal to, oh, and all these like steps are like reversible. Uh, so 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. So uh, I'm hoping to reduce this down to like a true thing. Uh, okay, well this is now just, by multiplying by this side, uh, this is saying that 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2 to the n plus 1. Uh, running out of space. Uh, but now, I like, what do I do? I mean, this is getting pretty easy now, right? This is like 2 to the n plus 1 minus 2 to the n uh, is greater than or equal to just like 2. Um, so this is like 2 to the n times 2 minus 1 is greater than or equal to 2. So 2 to the n is greater than or equal to 2. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, this is just like true if n is greater than or equal to 1, which it is. All right. And so now, uh, what I'm going to do is say, all right, look, man, uh, this going, now read the proof this way. I'm not going to rewrite this thing. Life is short. n is greater than or equal to 1. So 2 to the n is greater than or equal to 2. So this line, so this line, uh, so this line, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up. Uh, to um, the very thing I was trying to prove, which is the wish. Or maybe I, I, I don't, I, that doesn't make any sense. I erase this, I put a happy face. What have I just done? I've proved the wish. Uh, and the wish together with the inductive hypothesis uh, gives me the thing in blue, which is basically the, the thing I need to prove in the inductive step. So that shows that this property is inherited by the next number, and so math by the principle of mathematical induction, it's true for, for all numbers. All right.